Was, was it your idea, uh, their idea, to leave it as a surprise until the last minute, like to make it official that you were going to do the match? I don't know whose idea that was. It just turned out like it did. Did yeah. you like how that was done? It was done fine because I, I didn't want to go out there. Uh, if, if you're into YouTube at all, you know, that I think, uh, who was it? Nick Bockwinkel worked in Japan with Billy Robinson. It was an exhibition match. So I didn't want to do something like that because you know, that's kind of old school. Now, I worked for those two guys and they're amazing talents. And I didn't want to do any kind of gimmick matches. So the fact that it turned into a melee worked. And, I, and, and, and you, do, you know, when we were out there, I didn't think we had that crowd because that was in a building where sound kind of escapes the ring sometimes. And it does that, it did that at Ford Field, it does it at uh, Toronto at the Sky Dome. So I didn't know we had them like we did, but when I looked back at it, we had them and it was a hell of a pop going out. You know, it was I was in the crowd and you definitely had them. And it was actually one of my favorite parts of the whole weekend because, you know, me growing up in the Attitude Era, you being my favorite wrestler growing up, and knowing, you know, the joy that you brought me as a kid getting to see you wrestle. And then I was in the crowd looking around, seeing all these people who had never gotten to experience a Stone Cold Steve Austin match, you know, because of their age and stuff. And just to see the excitement on all their faces, it was like, God, this is so cool that a new generation of people get to experience this. The thing that popped me, uh, my producer for Broken Skull Sessions showed me a video he made on his iPhone. He actually videoed some of the talent, the people that I worked with that were there visiting, walking out to the crowd to be there live. And that's, it's like a curtain sellout, right? Yep. So they want to go out there to be in the crowd to feel it, not just watch it on a monitor. And that meant a lot to me when I saw that. I was like, oh, man, it's pretty cool because they know what's up. Yes. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and blow smoke, but, I mean, when you go out there and get that kind of reaction, man, it's a charge. Oh, I can only imagine. Yeah. I mean, well, okay, wait, I'm gonna, I was going to get ahead of myself. I'm going to save that question for the end. Before I get to that, uh, you're training for the match. I know that in the past, in the past 19 years, you've talked about how you wanted to make sure that if you did ever come back, that it would be at the same level you wrestled before. How much training did you do beforehand, like in-ring training, to get ready for the match? Man, zero. Really? Zero in-ring training. Uh, I was doing cardio. I got on, here, here, here's, an, here's an inside tip for you. I love Seamus. He's got a great YouTube channel, the Celtic Warrior Workouts, yep, yep. whatever they're called. I got on there, I watched uh, Edge's Routine, I watched uh, Brian Daniels or Daniel Bryson, whatever his name is. I watched his, his uh, training routine. But the one that really got me was Becky Lynch's comeback routine. So I did Becky Lynch's routine over and over and over again. And then I invented my own out of that. So I, I was training hard at my house, but I didn't have a ring. Once I got to Dallas, I got there a lot, three or four days early because I always do. Yep. I ran the ropes a lot with Drew Gulak, who's absolutely wonderful. He's a great talent. Super guy, very intuitive in the ring. We did a lot of crisscross stuff, locked up, grab headlock, did a couple of spots, and dude, just just a little bit of that, and I was gassing. And dude, I, I was when, when when I tell you I'm in good shape, I was. But doing cardio at the house, as hard as I was working out, is not the in ring activity, and it's it's very specific. Cardio is, and so like when Ko comes in or Drew, they're road warriors. They've been on the road, so as much as I worked, as it, it was short notice. But as hard as I worked out, I still wasn't in the shape because they were doing a specific task. Were you happy with the match afterward? It was what it was. You know, I wanted to give them more, but the whole time, man, you know, when you got that amount of people out there, and I've been in front of a million crowds, but, you know, you're just trying to pace yourself. And when you saw me go sip beers, dude, I wasn't doing that to advertise my beer. I was doing that to just take a breather and, and just kind of monitor the system because I was getting a little gassed. And you don't want to just go out there and just freak out. Yep. So the, I was just taking those opportunities to slow down and catch a breather. Were you nervous walking out at all? Oh, no, man. When that crowd hit, man, I was like, I was in a state of mind when I was pacing back and forth, and a lot of people came to try to shake my hand. And I was like, dude, I'm already in the zone, man. Don't, don't, don't mess with me. <laughs> so, yeah, when I get out there in a big event like that, there, there is kind of that little bit of nerve, but that's what you live for. Yep. You know, I, I've been gone 19 years, but when you're about to go out, you're excited.